Hi everyone. Let's see if the door trick works again. Hi guys. Hi freshman. Hi Babu. <laughs> Hi Yuma. So today I thought I would um, try a landscape. As you guys probably know by now, I'm uh, reactivating my YouTube channel. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna see what it turns out like and um, I'm gonna try to upload this onto my YouTube. So yeah, initially I was thinking of doing um, on StreamYard or on Zoom tonight, but um, I kind of just wanted to continue the Friday nights, at least maybe until next week. And then after that, perhaps start pre-recording some of them. Hi, Yoma. Hi, Bogey. Hi, Audra. How's your day been, guys? Have you, have you all had a really awesome Friday? I hope you have. Today has been pretty hectic, but I've had, um, yeah, I had a pretty productive, pretty cool day so far. Um, and today, hi, Arvin. Hi, Fozy. Hi, Fozy. Um, and tonight I will be finally getting to chat with uh, Ms. Drew, whom, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, when I first started during MCO to do IG Lives, well, that was like the first one. So Drew had actually uh, initiated it and we were supposed to have a chit chat and it just never happened because we had so many internet connection issues. So today, like almost three months later, I finally get to chat with this lovely lady. Hi, Lissa. Hi, Audra. And she's here. Fozy. Hi, Drew. Okay, so real quick, guys. Um, let me know if this is um, all right in terms of having it in landscape. And I suppose you guys can just tip your camera as well, right? Yoma, how's in Malay? No lockdown, no more. Oh, how is it in Malaysia? Oh, well, we are kind of in recovery mode, so it's not really a lockdown per se anymore. Now all the businesses, the sectors are slowly opening. I believe even cinemas are going to open soon. Are you guys excited about that? Cinemas will be open come 4th of July. Oh, did I get that date from somewhere? I don't know. It opens in July. I know that. Um, so yeah, things are slowly opening. I hope. Where are you from, Yoma? Okay, so guys, with that, I'm going to bring on our wonderful special guest. Unfortunately, I won't have a full hour today because I still have some stuff to prep for tomorrow. I have work tomorrow. So yes, I'm quite excited about that. Um, so joining us tonight is, like I said, the first person I was supposed to do an IG live with, and I'm so happy that we finally get to do this. She is a certified ESA personal trainer, uh, sports nutritionist, and also she is the co-founder of Core Reactor PT Studio. And she has been so kind. I have been doing Zoom lessons uh, within her classes the last couple of weeks, and I am loving it. So if you guys are looking for a trainer, I highly, highly recommend Drew. Okay, that being said, let's pull her onto this show. Where are you, Drew? There you are. Okay, so let's quickly add her in. La la la, there we go. So I don't know how this uh, landscape is gonna work. I'm guessing it's just gonna be elongated. Maybe we'll have our noses like that. <laughs> we'll see. see how it turns out. So yeah, thank you for joining me here tonight, guys. Yay! Oh, this is much better. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. <laughs> Hi, Drew. How are you? We're both in I'm black good. tonight. I know. Okay. <laughs> We're twinning. Color. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. A little bit tired, but I'll say, no, I'm not going to cancel with Nadia tonight. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad yeah. you, you, you agreed to it. You know, I have to admit something. Like, I was almost on the verge of like, oh, I, I really just wanted, because I had a long day, and I just wanted to chill and watch some Netflix. <laughs> We're know, doing right? work. I was like, no, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I finished yeah. my work at like 7. Yeah, wow. So okay. Right. And then after dinner, I had pasta, and I was like, "Oh man, I was so ready for bed." But so nice to just do this, and yeah. So thank you for organizing this. Of course, of course. I was just saying just now how we, how actually the whole reason why I started um, these IG Live uh, Grow with Nadia series is because you remember the first time you you reached out to me on WhatsApp and you're like, "Hey, let's do a chat," and since then. 
Like I did that one where our connection didn't work and then I thought, you know what, I'll just start doing something anyway. So I'm so glad. Thank you for kind of, you know, kicking my butt into motion and getting me to actually do something. So yeah, I have you to thank for this. You're doing so good. Like not you, <laughs> so great with this live growing <laughs> So, thank thanks. you. Soon, sooner or later, I'm gonna migrate it to maybe like a different platform, and then just kind of broadcast it onto YouTube. But this is definitely gonna be one of the last few. So I'm so glad that we managed to get you in for the IG live sessions because I feel it, it's nice and interactive, you know. Yeah, that's really good. And this is my first time doing the landscape. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh. not bad, right? I feel like it's actually yeah. better. It gives anyway. you a new face. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so so how have so you know you were saying that you just finished work at 7 p.m what what does your average day look like because i mean i know that you so you're the co-founder of um core reactor pt studio and basically you from what i can gather and based on social media is that you basically work from like 7 a.m all the way through until i don't know like what does your average day look like as a trainer wow that's it's real crazy. I I have to. Well, we start at our first class. It's at nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah, where do I do I look this way or do I look that way? I look to my camera, right? Yeah, you can look to your camera. Yeah, I'm just looking at you because um, it's easier. It's easy. For me, it's nice for me to be able to see your reaction. So you yeah. know, I should be looking there too. Yeah. yeah. So same yeah. thing for me. So I just look at you as well. Yeah. yeah. So I start my work at nine o'clock. Yeah. We have three slots in the morning, so it goes mm -hmm. by. It's only an hour class, so yeah. nine to ten, and then we get like fifteen minutes gap in between, just for like a quick drink or something. Right. Yeah. And after nine to ten, we have a ten fifteen to eleven fifteen, and then after that, eleven thirty to twelve thirty. So we have three slots in the morning. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Every There's day. Like bookings as well, but thankfully. Oh no, you've hung. Okay. Well, don't worry. I'm sure we'll come back. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So is that every day? When when we started well it really depends on on the booking sometimes it's busy it's sometimes like like uh, there's few people booked in but but basically we have three slots in the morning and then in the afternoon we have a long like a like a lunch hour break and then yes. we're back at 4 30 until eight o'clock wow my yeah, goodness so basically, so basically three slots in the morning and then three slots in the evening that yeah. is insane. Oh, you do this on Saturdays and Sundays. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> so Hi, you do this like, do you, do you know Jeff too? Jeff is like, um, like he's a superhuman. He, he does like, oh, I want to say like triathlons, but it's like beyond triathlons. He's like, yeah, anyway, he's, he's a, a super duper fit dude. <laughs> so shout out to Jeff. <laughs> I don't, yeah. we don't open on Sundays. Okay, so just some so Monday through to Saturday. Well, that's crazy enough. Yeah, and Saturday is half day. Okay. <sighs> yeah. So tomorrow yeah. you are working from 7 till like 2. No, uh, 8 o'clock, eight like 8 o'clock until 8 o'clock until 12. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's pretty insane. And, yeah, it is. It, it's very physically demanding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm a type of person, if I don't have enough sleep, I can't function properly the next day. So I have yeah. to be disciplined and I get my sleep. Regardless of there's so many things I want to do at night, but if I don't get my sleep, I will suffer the next day. Yeah. 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 100%. I'm curious, to... right? Sorry? Yeah, so I have to make sure, like I have at least eight hours of sleep. I gotta have eight hours. High five to that. Seriously, yeah. because you know what? I think, um, I mean, I, I feel like for the longest time, there's this whole myth that has been, I mean, it's not even a myth, right? But you know, even if you go online, there's this whole like need and desire for everyone to constantly be productive. And you know, you very often will see this quote like, oh, I can sleep when I'm dead. But you know, that's not true at all. And um, I, haven't, I haven't actually, my husband's currently reading this book called Why We Sleep. Um, I haven't actually read it yet, but I'm going to read it after he's done. But it sounds really fascinating. And it just talks about the importance of sleep. And 
um, and how like in today's culture where it's like if you're not working you're lazy or if you don't look like you're working then you're lazy or you know people kind of make it super um, I don't want to say glamorize it but you know they make it uh, seem as if like you should be working until the wee hours of the night otherwise you're just you're not hustling hard enough like so what's what's your personal take on that especially as someone who knows all about fitness and what that can do to your body. Why is that a bad thing? Why should you actually get eight hours of sleep? My goodness, like, okay, so if I don't get eight hours of sleep oh, no. or don't get Hang enough on. sleep, is it okay? Yeah, okay, now it's good, yeah. Yeah, so for me, sleep is everything. Like I told you just now, I'm a type of person, like if I don't have enough sleep, I, I won't be able mm -hmm. to function properly the next day. The thing is, when you sleep, you know, when you fully give your body like enough time to really rest, you are more yeah. likely to be productive and you're more likely to be like, like awake in your mind that you're able to focus and focus and concentrate. So yeah. for me, sleep is very important. And then if we talk about fitness, you know, you could be a person who's, I'm still okay, right? The connection is still yeah, okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. You could be a person like, yeah, you train very hard and your workouts are on point and then your nutrition is on point but if your sleep is not on point it's still you're still not getting that 100 percent effectiveness of your res result versus to yeah. if you really sleep well yeah yeah you know because if again like if you're training and if you're you don't like oh no it's hard okay let's keep our fingers crossed it comes yeah. back okay Phew. okay you're back where did I stop just now? Um, you're saying if you're training and if you don't get enough sleep. Okay, so let's say you're you're training and you're getting enough sleep. Then let's say today you're you're training, you're lifting weights, right? Yeah. And the next day you basically didn't get enough sleep. Then are you able to like fully give your hundred percent into that training that you're gonna have the next day? Yeah. Are yeah. you? Are you going to have like energy? You're going to constantly be in a deficit, I feel, you know, it just yeah. gets, yeah. Yeah. And then, so like, for example, you're a type, like you're training for like, uh, like bodybuilding and, and stuff like that. So you're building muscles and if you're not getting enough rest, then you're not giving your muscles enough time to recover. Yeah. So that's very important. So if we, even if we're, we're talking about like, uh, fitness, sleep is also important. Yeah. 100% Gabby and Gabby's a good friend of mine. Hi Gabby. So Gabby's agreeing with you. She's like if yeah, if she doesn't get enough sleep or enough hours of sleep in order to perform like you just can't do it. So she's actually currently I think every day or like every day she works at Fly Cycle. Um, she's got like classes and that kind of like commitment just like I suppose, um, you know, with any trainer, especially if you're a trainer and you're working out not once but like multiple times in a day then even more so right i suppose sleep is like top 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 priority so yeah. i'm curious I on sundays seriously, i seriously don't like i was gonna say like i can't i don't understand people who only sleep for two three hours and they still go to the office the next day i'll be like i'll be on <laughs> like flat on my face <laughs> i know honestly I'll me too flat. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's just not, I mean, I guess it's just not healthy. I mean, some people, they do say I, when you get older, um, and this is like maybe, um, I don't know whether I'm just making this up, but I'm pretty sure most people, as you get older um, in your 70s and like really older, or even 60s, 70s, like then generally maybe you need less sleep. I'm not sure. Or that's what it seems like. Older people do tend to sleep less. Um, but I think like when you're in your prime, or at least in your working life, right, before you've retired, it's so important to just make sure that you really balance the two and not just take it for granted that you can keep pushing your sleep as, um, you know, pushing it aside and not making it a priority, right? Yeah. yeah I love my sleep. And that's <laughs> piece, you know? So what time do you have to, like, do you have a strict regime? What is your personal um, fitness, like, to maintain yourself in optimal health? Because obviously you're working back to back and um, you're kind of, you know, you are also sort of like the face of your business, right? And you need to 
really be in tip top everything all the time. So how do you um, balance your own lifestyle with um, discipline and still indulging a little bit? What do you do? Okay, so again, I have to prioritize my sleep, you know, because again, if you're able to prioritize things, then you're able to kind of like, like have a better result. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, number one, we're talking about sleep. For me, I got to have like that enough sleep. I yeah. got to be disciplined because there are days when I still want to read, keep reading on something online and just like, you know, like on Pinterest and keep searching about a lot of things that I want to do or what, what, what do I want to eat tomorrow or what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just can't stop by then. Again, I got to, I just really have to have that mindset that, hey, if I don't stop now, sure, I'm going to suffer tomorrow. So I guess yeah. it's very important to, to prioritize and, and be disciplined. Yeah. Do, yeah you, and, do you have a set time by like 11 p.m. that's it, lights out? Or what do you do? 12. 12? Okay, yeah. That's late. Okay. <laughs> but I guess, yeah, if you, can, if you can afford to get up, do you manage to like sleep in until 8 so you get full 8 hours? Yeah, 8 o'clock. And sometimes I'm really bad at waking up in the morning. I'll snooze until like, wow, I'm really going to get up. I'm really going to get up. <laughs> <laughs> My alarm for like four or five times until like to the last yeah. minute. Yeah, I was kind Me of too. Fall, I was kind of fall during the lockdown where in like, if I have class on Zoom, I can yeah. just leave it to the very last minute. Like, because <laughs> I can just like, hey, okay, log in on Zoom and okay, I'm online. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can't do that yeah. when going to the studio. You're, you can't be like looking like you just woke up. You're going to be like a little bit yeah. distant at least <laughs> yeah it's true like I, I think if you go to the studio you actually gotta brush your teeth and stuff like that whereas at home exactly if you do it after a class no one will know no one's gonna exactly. smell your breath yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah, oh yeah, man i feel you though snoozing like three four five times story of my life i'm trying to get better at it though i'm trying to just do like you know, my husband's like, you should just not snooze. Then you will get up because you know there's no snooze. But I can't. If there's one habit that I want to really start working on is, yeah, when I hear my alarm in the morning, I'll wake up. But yeah. I've been working on that for many, 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 many years now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, you know when you say you set your bedtime for 12, right? I mean, so lights out bed at 12 so if your mind is i mean do you have like a bedtime ritual to try to get into the zone so that you can when you hit the pillow you're immediately asleep like what do you do to prep your mind to getting into like the sleep zone so to say because you know otherwise i end up having that personally for me i i don't actually put my devices away and i know i should sometimes i go into a habit of actually doing it but most of the time I, i'm still looking at my phone like do you have any tips that you do to try to make sure that come 12 you are asleep and you get full eight hours so you're not tossing and turning until 2 a.m to be to be honest with you i'm kind of like like i'm guilty about it and i'm the one like i'm the one who need advice on this <laughs> You know, but I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to like, okay, like, uh, okay, one more. You know, like sometimes when you start like watching Netflix, yeah, and you say, okay, I, I gotta be at bed at twelve so I can have eight hours of sleep. But then you're like, oh my goodness, one more episode. Can we just? How <laughs> I know. But, but again, no excuses. You know, you're really gonna suffer, and then you regret the next day. Yeah. Know? Human, you know, we make mistakes over and over again, and and we just yeah. don't learn. Yeah, so oh, I know. Like, uh, like I try to be, like I'll start motivating myself by like having dinner. I'm having yeah. dinner. Okay, tonight there are like a couple of things I really want to do tonight, and I'll try to do it. And once I do it, then okay, I'll try to like just wind down. For me, <laughs> and oh, no, I yeah, start you. Hang on. Let's do it a second. Okay, you're back. So you were saying, so after dinner, yeah. you will yeah. say you have a few things yeah, so you want to do? Yeah. Yeah, and then once, I've, once I once I kind of like uh, finish it, then I'm like, okay, 
try to put my phone away and okay, let's try to sleep. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. But of course, there are days as well that I, I struggle, like I can't sleep. Like, well, I'm not stressed, but I don't know, but it could be like underlying stress, but I just can't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I, just I mean, sleep. do you find that if you work out hard enough in the day, you just knock out anyway, though? Or that doesn't necessarily happen? Okay. No, it doesn't necessarily happen. So during the lockdown, it happened like for a week or two, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I was up until like, I was up until like 3 a.m. And of course, that time I wasn't really kind of working. I only have like one or two Zooms. Yeah. And I just couldn't sleep. Oh no. Am I here? Yes, now you're back. Okay, now yeah. you're back. Yeah. Yes. So, so I couldn't sleep. And then for, for almost two weeks, it's been happening like that. I can't sleep for... You know, like I hit the bed at like 12 or one o'clock. Yeah. But of course, I don't have to worry about waking up too early the next day because, you know, it's locked down. I'm not really working that much yet. Yeah. And, and I tried, I tried working out really hard. Like I'll do a little bit of, of workout and then I'll do a little bit of anything, whatever I could do. Yeah. To yeah. Make myself, I still can't, I still can't sleep. I'm tired, but I don't know. But mentally, yeah. you're still wide awake. Yeah, so it's 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 a, it's a real struggle to yeah. get a good sleep. Yeah, I've been yeah. trying like to meditate a little bit, and sometimes like that does help, but it does take a while. Hi, Lenora. Speaking hey. of, um, yeah, I still need to to chat with her. I haven't even had a chat with her yet <laughs> since like, and it's been three months. You know, I wanted to ask you, so since MCO started, because like you just said, in the beginning of MCO, you had maybe one or two Zoom classes. And now it seems like, I mean, I joined a couple of yours and there's always this huge community of people. Like, so how did you pivot your business like during the three months? Like how quickly did you manage to adapt and how did your clients sort of um, accept it? Like, did they, you know, was there any resistance? What, what was the whole experience like? Of course, like when we jump into again during the lockdown this is really great like uh kind of like like it opens like an avenue for us to venture into doing yeah. online this where before mco or before the lockdown we never done it yeah you know, ever all, so this is all yeah, new completely new before. yeah yeah so it's completely new but of course like when we first started it not a lot of clients are kind of like ready to go on Zoom or to do it. And so there's like a 50-50 group of people okay. who are like willing to do it. And there are like some people who are kind of like just really up for it. Yeah, because some people they say they, although they want to try to work out at home, they need some kind of motivation. They need Len or Drew to motivate them to do a workout. And yeah. they can't do it without us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I there are also like, uh, like factors like, for example, like uh, they don't have internet or they don't have good internet or right. yeah. So and then they don't want to be seen online and they're not comfortable to do mm -hmm. online. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. And these are these are you mean these are these are people who were supposed to be in a group class or like one on ones and they just weren't comfortable. Yeah. So it's basically both for one-to-one -one okay. and for group classes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure by now everyone has come around to it, right? Do you think everyone's changed their mindset completely? Because I, I mean, I've experienced it a couple of times and I love it because there's no traffic. You don't have to like worry about, you know, finding a parking somewhere. I mean, especially if it was in KL, right? I think if I were doing classes in KL, I would 100% I would go Zoom. <laughs> yeah, so now that we are open, and we still offer uh, Zoom classes. There are a group of people who are like, oh, I don't want to go out. It saves me time to drive. So I'm just going to work, work out at home and just go on Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Other people, but there are people like, hey, I got to get out of the house. I got to yeah. go to the and I got to be, you know, yeah. out of the house. So it's. Yeah, it's, there's definitely two camps of people. Yeah. Those who really need like a physical person presence you know to like 
um, get them motivated. And then I guess, you know, the ones who kind of are a bit more self-motivated as well, and you can do it at home. So what is, okay, so how long have you now officially been um, doing what you're doing? Like, how did, how did you get um, your business up and running? Like, what inspired you to actually go into fitness in the first place? long have I been doing this? Uh, so it started 2010. We started like kind of renovating the place year 2010. And now it's 10 years. It's, it's a decade. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, it's really sad. Like uh, during this time, people, you hear people for sure in our group, right? There are people posting like, hey, you know, we're going to close our gym. We're closing down this business that it's really sad to hear that, you know, but of course those are like, we're talking about big businesses, you yeah. know, and actor is just like a tiny business, a small business. And how did I start like for actors? So I have a very good friend of mine, Len, you met Len, right? Yeah. Joined class. Yes. And we started this together and me growing up, I've always been into fitness. So I mentioned to you, like, you know, like I joined track and field, you know, yeah. I represent school for, for 100 meter dash. I compete, but of course, most competition, but it's okay. Yeah. Okay, you're back. Okay, I'm back. I'm back for good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so, it. yeah, so you were always really sporty I, in school been, anyway. Yeah, I, I see myself as an athletic person, like, I... You know, like growing up, like when all my cousins, female ones, they're like playing with their Barbies. And I just want to play with the boys, go play basketball and go run in the field and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, like, I like being active. I like moving. Yeah. So yeah. if you were to be like, let's say going for a holiday, I'm, I'm not a type like, okay, I can just like sit down and I want something like, I want to go wall climbing. I want to be active. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you so, do remind but, me of like um, a modern day Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. <laughs> oh, I feel like they could cast you as Tomb Raider. You know, yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> you. Yeah. So, but I also mentioned to you, um, I did a little bit of. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna be patient and wait. It will come back. Hi, Zoe. Okay, you're back. Yeah. So I was saying just now, I did nursing in the Philippines. So I like, I like studying about health. And I remember in, in high school, we, you know, like uh, on fourth year high school, we were supposed to do, we had to do a, a thesis, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. So like my topic is always about like health, and fitness, health and stuff like that. Right. So I, I like it. I love it. I'm kind of like. I didn't know then that I'm passionate about it. And then so after nursing, I came to Miri and then I was teaching in a Montessori school. I actually, I'm actually a certified Montessori teacher. And I was, ah. yeah, I was working with kids. I'm working in Montessori school for five years. Right. Right. But you must have so much patience. Yeah. But even, even that time, like, cause I was only working half day and then after, after, yeah, and work out. Oh, okay, we gotta wait. Hi, Mia. Okay, there you are. You're back. Yeah. And Nad Nadia, are you using Wi-Fi or are you using your your data? Um, I'm using the Wi-Fi at home. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you using Wi-Fi or data? Yeah, I'm using Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Yeah. Am I blurry for you as well? You're, you're very clear. Oh, okay. Cool. So strange. So, so, um, so tell me a little bit. Okay. So I wanted to ask you this, right? You know, I think a lot of people who go, who are trying to especially embark on their fitness journey. Um, a lot of the times, you know, I have friends who say, okay, I want to shed X amount of weight. And then, you know, and then they go into their fitness journey with that in mind. So, like, what is your advice? Should someone come into, you know, their fitness journey, like with being goal orientated or habit orientated? Like, what is, what is your approach when you have new clients come into you and have, when they have specific goals like that? 
Okay, so first of all, as a personal trainer, it's very important to know what kind of client you have. You know, you could be, because I'm not going to choose whether it's like goal orientated or habit oriented, right? Yeah. So yeah. Both, both these two are very important. Yeah. yeah. You got you gotta know your client, what type of client. But if you're if you have let's say like you're my client and I know like hey Drew, you know, I already have this kind of habits and stuff like that, but you're lost because you don't you have no idea about setting goals, then then yeah. I'm gonna teach you how to set goals that is achievable and and I'm gonna teach you like like making smart goals. So first yeah. of all, I gotta know like what type of client I have, you know, their yeah. personality or yeah then that will help me that, that will guide me through like better this, this person Hello. okay you're back <laughs> it's it's like as soon as i say oh no and then you'll come back so that's all yeah. i gotta do <laughs> yeah. but, so well, you say it's very important to know to know your client yeah you know? Yeah, so it's, and again, there's a step, a step by step way to guide a person to push to the next level because yeah. you can't push someone who is in level one and then push this person to level 10. You're going to have yeah. like a step by step kind of, yeah. So what about, um, you know, I think there's also a big mindset in a lot of people that, you know, I have to shed kilos versus just um like i mean what is your approach do you think it's a good idea to look at the numbers on the scale or is there a different approach entirely that one should take you know when it comes to trying to be a healthier person and trying to you know get on a on a sustainable fitness journey in the long term is our numbers important in that sense okay i will not say numbers are not so important, but what I would say is don't 100% focus on just the numbers, you know, because you could, you're going to be frustrated. You could be looking at the numbers and it was like, oh, I'm up. And then the next day you get on the scale. Oh, I'm down. I'm up. I'm down. Yeah. So don't focus on, on the numbers, but focus on, on like how you feel. So yeah. let's say, are you more energetic or how do you feel about like wearing this dress? You know, like, do you fit, you know, because Again, it's, it's relative. You could be, like, there are so so many, like, athletes out there that if you weigh them and they're, like, fit and they're, like, muscular, they could be obese if you focus on the scale. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't focus on the scale. So, like, for example, for me, personally, you can still hear me, Nadia, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. So, if I have to weigh myself maybe, like, years ago, like my weight. Okay, you're back. Yeah, so I was saying, it's like if I yeah, go on. if I were to, if I were to weigh myself 15 years ago, I'm actually like so much lighter. Okay. Oops. What's that? Okay. I got it. Suddenly went to... dark. It's like yeah, my, is this know. like a horror movie where something suddenly happens? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's that? Okay. Well, it's just so you used to weigh how many kilos lighter you said? Okay, so I used to weigh about like uh, 45, 47. Okay. Yeah, 45, 47. But for some people, it's like, wow, this is so good. It's so light. But now yeah. I'm a lot heavier. I'm like 52 from 45, 47. Yeah. yeah. But if I were to. That's huge. Like, That's a huge jump. Yeah, because now I feel like, okay, before I'm kind of skinny. Now I have a little bit of muscle, so I'm heavier. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but if I focus on the number, I'll be like I'm in trouble. Exactly. So yeah. I, I, that's you know, that's so important, I think. Yeah, to know yeah. that actually I mean your muscle weighs a lot and just because maybe, you know, if you're on your fitness journey, if you weigh more, it doesn't mean that you're not healthy. What's important is I guess the ratio of muscle versus fat, I guess. Yeah, so if I have clients, like new clients who, let's say, sign up for PT and they're, they're on a, like, a weight loss journey and then they're going to be like, oh, of course, like, it's good to see the, it's good to see like, okay, the weight is dropping, but I say don't put your heart and soul 100% on the scale. 
you know yeah you're gonna you're gonna focus on other things like little <laughs> things such you have more energy or you're sleeping better or you fit better in in your clothes or you can pinch less fat in your arms or yeah the little, little things you know and and makes you feel better that way yeah what's the biggest piece of advice that you always make sure you give your clients right from the very beginning to ensure that you know they will be satisfied you know as long as they put in x amount of work you know what kind of advice do you normally give them right from the start if they want to really have long-term sustainability with fitness don't starve yourself <laughs> heard that guys <laughs> Don't starve yourself. Okay. Yeah, there's a people, people, people out there like, uh, oh, I really want to lose weight, and they don't eat. They starve themselves. They eat a little bit of this. You know, some people think like eating a bowl of salad will make you skinny, and eating like a burger will make you fat. You know, yeah. it doesn't happen like overnight. So, again, when we talk about when we talk about fitness, of course, when we talk about fitness, we're talking about like how fit you are physically. Yeah. You know. To me, I don't want to just focus on, on fitness, but you're going to focus on like health or your, your well-being yeah. as a whole, you know? Yeah. And yeah, it's one thing to be able to like squat heavy, but yourself, like, how do you actually feel about... Oh, no, you're gone. Hang on. Guys, she'll be back. There you are. Okay. So you're saying it's one thing to squat heavy, but... Well, it's it's one thing to to squat really heavy, but then if if you're not really looking at, you're not really looking after other areas in your yeah. for your health, then yeah. it's it's a big thing. It's a com very compound thing, but it's just finding balance and finding what works for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what do you have to say to? Um, there, I mean, I guess there are a million different types of diets that people do try to do. So the rule number one is make sure you eat, don't not eat, right? But, um, you know, what do you say about, um, I know there's all kinds of methods, but I'm sure you've, you must have encountered clients who perhaps go with the whole idea that I'm just going to eat one meal a day and it's going to be a big meal and then that's it. Is that a good approach to take? Or, I mean, is it is it just that everyone has different... Um, uh, different methods that are more suited to them? Again, okay, we're all different. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna consider you're gonna consider your culture, you're gonna consider your 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 age, you're gonna consider like like we're all different. It's quite diverse in terms of like your age and 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 everything. So for me is basically you have to find what works for you. It's about like knowing yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that is like your diet. Yeah. The diet you're sticking to right now is like really working great for you. But I'm, you know, like I could be trying it and it, it's not working for me. Right. It's, it's all about like, there's, there's no like one size, it's not like a one size fit, fits all. So you're going to yeah. find one that works for you. you know? yeah. And again, when you talk about like sustainability, you know, yeah. like, of course, like some people, they can like prep all this, like salmon and avocados, but not yeah. a lot of people can afford that. I know it's expensive. <laughs> and we have loads of actual local food and fruits that are cheap that, you know, that are just as good, if not better. Right. You don't need to eat kale. You can eat bok choy and sawi and, and uh, yeah. spinach <laughs> and kang kong. <laughs> Again, like for me, like I have a particular diet that I love for myself but it's not necessarily that this is good for my clients so I'm not gonna push what I have or my kind of diet to you or to other people yeah I will say okay what's your favorite fruits or what's your favorite food or you know like what yeah so I gotta know it's not about me but it's about you so yeah. what kind of food it fuels you what kind of food makes yeah. you happy you know and yeah. just basically Finding that and knowing that, hey, this is, this is my kind of food. So you work around that. Yeah. yeah. But then again, when we talk about health and nutrition, is not really rocket science as well. If I say, okay, 
for you? Okay, guys, we'll hang in there. Okay, there you are. Go on. Yeah, what was I saying just now? It's not rocket science. Um, it's oh, quite simple, talking. you were saying. Yeah, well, I, w I would say, yeah, it's not rocket science. Like, for example, if you eat fried chicken every day, you think it's good. Yeah. And if you think oily food is good for you? Well, I suppose once in a while, I, I love my oily yeah. food, though. <laughs> Could have say. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. I love fried chicken and French fries and and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really find what what's for you and work around that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I mean, you got to figure out your own tastes and then tailor accordingly with that. And I guess a safe thing to a safe thing to always go by is just go for natural. Uh, produced right that those are the best as long as they're not in packets if you're buying fresh produce and you like those foods then go with stuff like that i mean the other thing would be portion sizes um what would you say is the perfect portion that we should be taking at breakfast lunch and dinner i mean there's that saying right you know you eat like um uh eat like a king for breakfast something else in the middle and then you um, eat like a pauper for dinner do you does that apply to you do you use that method <laughs> yeah well it's actually there's there's science behind it so if okay. you if you if you eat a lot in the morning yeah. will you need that energy in during the day right you will use that energy right yeah okay so that so makes if, sense yeah so if you eat too much at night what are you gonna do you're gonna sleep right sleep and not digest so it. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to use the energy anymore. So, but again, the lifestyle is most people, they don't eat that much in the morning and they don't eat that much in the afternoon and they just king in the evening. Go all out at dinner time. <laughs> yeah. And so this is actually quite bad for your, for your body because Again, by right, when you're sleeping, you sh your organs, your digestive system should be resting or what have you. <laughs> yeah. You see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's just, uh, it's just the little leaves here because <laughs> I got plants. Oh, my goodness. And the air is like blowing. I got plants. Uh -huh. Here and oh, so it's your plants that are doing it? That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> it's like watching some, you know, like a, a interesting um, horror movie. It's, it's like maybe, right? yeah. Okay. So, okay, I'm, I'm gonna switch off. Okay. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you have any questions about health and fitness, please, please, please feel free to drop your questions over to us. Hi, Pavitran. Hi, Chua. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Sanjeev. Hi, Eddie. Okay. Yeah, so, what so, about yourself? Um, you're saying about uh, eating, like your body needs to digest, your organs need to rest. Yeah, so when you're, when you're sleeping, you're, when you eat a lot at night and, and basically you go to bed and your body is, your digestive system is so busy, like trying to digest all the food you you yeah. eat because your your body is so busy busy during the time that you're sleeping by the time you wake up in the morning you actually feel so tired yeah yeah that because you yeah your your body is just so busy like working in the inside yeah yeah so and then, and then personally i i know i've experienced it as well like you know like sometimes you go for supper and you know because to be honest i'm not always i've not always been like you know, again, fitness, health and fit fitness for me, my journey is not like this, you know? It's like there are days like, okay, I've been to like a few, you know, I put on weight oh, and no. I just... Hang on, guys. She'll be back. Okay. Yes. Sorry, you saying your journey, is it like this, like a little wriggly worm like mine? Actually, no, yeah. mine is like, like this. MCO was this and then slowly coming back up again. Yeah, well, it's just... That's just life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna adapt, we're gonna evolve, we're gonna 
What do you do for, um, do you believe in cheat days or cheat meals? What's your philosophy? What's your take on that? Well, I used to, I used to kind of like, oh yeah, I gotta have cheat meals. I gotta have cheat days. Again, for most people, here's the thing. Well, it really, it depends. It depends where you are in your fitness. Like if you're, if you're someone who like, you're super fit, you have all the muscles and stuff like that. Of course you can afford cheat days. Yeah. But let, let's say you're someone who just st is just getting started and and think about it. You basically it's just working out, trying to lose weight, and then you do that cheat day. It's kind of like you put back on whatever you worked on during the weekdays. Yeah. So it's not advisable. What about a cheat meal then? Cheat meal, Cause, of course. Cause, I mean, because, you know, they say you shouldn't deprive yourself entirely, right? Or should you? Of, yeah. like, indulgences. Well, like, me, I love my chocolate. I still want to have my french fries and my burger and my pizza. Yeah, so yeah. you have it in moderation and just eat what makes you happy. <laughs> okay, so the million-dollar question, which I'm sure everyone would love to know. Um, I know you said there's no cookie-cutter fits all but what is your personal uh, regime like? So including like, like run us through 20, like run us through 24 hours in your day. So how many times, or maybe say in a week, like as well, how many times you, you put in the work for workouts and what your average um, like eating routine is? What, what do you do for meals normally? And how does it work? Okay, so for my workout, I work out, I work at five times a week or five, six times a week, I have like one or two rest days, depending okay. on, depending on my program. So for me personally, I will have like a, like a four to six week program that I'll follow myself mm -hmm. and then I'll try to stick to it because it's really good to have like a goal, you know, if you have yeah. a goal and when we talk about goal, I'll suggest you create like small goals, like small, small goals, because the thing is like, when you create such a big goal, and then halfway, you're kind of like halfway there and you're like, oh, I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. Yeah. You know? So it's better for you to, to create like small, small goals. Let's say, okay, uh, my goal for this week, I'm going to up my veggies. Yeah. yeah. And then when you, when you stick to that one week of sticking to that goal and you reach it, you, you're like, yes, I succeed. Yeah. yeah. And then you create another goal for the following week. So it's, it's good to have goals. Yeah. And then going back to your, to your question, my workout, I work out five to six days a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for my eating, to be honest, I'm not a t like I've tried this a long time ago. I used to like prep meal. Yeah. So I'll have my containers in the fridge like mm -hmm. for like two, three days. And it just didn't work for me. Right. It didn't work for me. So again, it's all about finding what works for you maybe for some people like like planning or meal prepping works when you prepare all your food like you invest your sunday just cooking yes. like hot and then keeping it everything i just can't eat it i want fresh food <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, like, I'm too lazy to cook like, in the week so it always works for me <laughs> so, but what works for yeah. me yeah what works for me is instead of like meal prepping like I prep my ingredients. So like, for example, like if, you, if your plan for the week is to basically have a lot of salad, then my all types of salad washed and in a container. And then okay. I'll have my, my tomatoes or whatever ing ingredients I have is all washed, cut, it's in a container. So anytime I want to prepare, I want to make something easy, it's all ready. I can just make it. So that saves yeah. a lot of time. I'm not gonna like sit there and cut my onions or peel yeah. my potatoes. So I like yeah. that kind of way of of prepping instead of making all these bulk meals. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. I don't. And for me, I don't like eating the same food. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, which, I, which brings I'm me to run and, us through an example of like what you would eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. So again, it depends. It depends as well because you know like there are days i'm really really busy that i don't have time to prep 
but I like eggs. I love eggs. Yeah. So yeah. I can just like boil eggs or like make omelet. And mm -hmm. with, with, like just now I was telling you like, okay, I prep like some ingredients like and, and tomatoes oh, no. and stuff like that. When I make omelet, mm -hmm. when I make omelet, like all the ingredients is already. Yeah. So like in the morning, like I like eggs, omelet or oats. Yeah. Some people say like, oh, oats is so disgusting or... But it depends what oats. you put in it. Yeah, I love oats. Yeah, I learned to love it. You know, like it depends what you put in it. I love it with bananas. You put a little bit of like nuts. Do you, you take it with milk? milk, like normal milk? Or do you? For me, it's just like, like I have one scoop of oats. I put yeah. a little bit of water. I stop using milk and then I just microwave it for like one minute yeah. and put whatever I want to put in it. Okay. Yeah. So you don't take any milk at all? Oh, no dairy. Uh, I love cheese. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I mean, I, I really, like, I was talking to Nadira, so she is plant-based. I find it very hard. Eventually, maybe I'll get there. But, um, yeah, so I was wondering, do, are you, are you um, predominantly plant-based? Or, no, you, because you eat burgers, right? So you're not, um, oh, you're no, not I vegetarian don't. or, okay. I'm not a vegan or vegetarian yeah but i love for protein i love yeah chicken is easy yeah yeah and i love fish yeah. but fish is so expensive <laughs> no, like, for example, like, uh, like for you guys you have options in kl to buy all this like like salmon like you can get like a really like big pieces of salmon for like 90 ringgit like here it's so expensive yeah I don't so even do that because it's just like 90 bucks for fish. I, I just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's probably still more affordable um, here than it would be in Miri, I guess. But you have local fish, though, um, I suppose, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All the local catch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not too bad. But like, yeah, I love, yeah, I love salmon. Yeah. So do you snack throughout the day as well? Or do you strictly have like three meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner? Oh, snacks. The snacks are good. I have snacks. Me too. <laughs> yeah. What kind of, what, what's your go-to snack? I mean, especially considering you are super fit and you're obviously pretty disciplined with your routine. Um, what's your common snack that you go to? Okay, so for me, like, if I have, like, a, like one handful of almonds or whatever mm -hmm. nuts you yeah, that's one. Yeah. And I like... Apple and peanut butter. Uh, mine is mine is a lot more um, like mine's a lot more calories. Mine is banana and peanut butter. Apples and peanut butter I like, but I, I yeah apples I can't seem to like as much as I do bananas. So my my weakness is bananas and peanut butter. Yeah. Oh, if it's really weird because like in Miri, it's so hard to find bananas. I love bananas. If I can get bananas here every day. Yeah, but you can't. Have... Oh, the small ones. Oh, the small ones. <laughs> yeah, those they're are... very sweet, though. They are very nice and sweet. Like they're perfect for like fried banana fritters, like pisang goreng. They're awesome yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't so know. It's, it's set up. I don't know what's wrong with my setup. I feel like my neck is like painful. Oh no. Because you're looking down at the at the camera. Well, we only have, I think, like five minutes left anyway. So anyway, real quick, because we only have five more minutes. Um, you know, I also wanted to share, because I personally am a huge fan of your Zoom classes. Um, just really quickly, while we still have time, um, how does it... So if someone is based in Kale, obviously if they're in Miri, they could come to your studio. But if someone is based in Kale and if they wanted to sign up um, with your studio um, and maybe do classes virtually, how can people go about it? And what do you recommend for like a beginner, you know, one-on-one -on -one, or would you recommend a group class? How does it work? Okay, so of course, like I will ask the person who, who is interested, okay, one, or are you interested to do group classes? Wait, hang on. But, Hi, Wendy. Yes, we were talking about bananas. <laughs> Me too. I oh, love I bananas. Love bananas. <laughs> uh, 
So we are definitely all big fans. <laughs> yeah. Banana peanut butter. The best. Yes, absolutely. 100%. We need to have a bananas and peanut butter sleepover party with yeah. Netflix. Oh. <laughs> Good. Sorry, oh, so sorry. you were saying about this. Sorry? Okay, sorry. Okay. Thank goodness. Oh. <laughs> Okay. What is going on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's funny. I'm not sure what's happening. But okay, so yeah, real quick, I'm so sorry I interrupted you. So you were saying, okay, so if someone wanted to sign up, like how can they go about it? Yeah. Okay, so what's a poor actor and then ask for Stay with us guys, show you act. Okay. You were saying? Yeah, so I was I was saying like it's it's easy. Basically, you just we can t tell you all the patty how. So we do group classes on Zoom, and we also have like one to one training. But for one to one training, we actually have two types of one to one training. So one is what we call of course PT personal training, where we specifically design the workout based on your fitness level, your health right. requirements, or or your fitness goals. So. With personal training, all the workouts are basically customized. Are all what, sorry? All the workouts are customized. Okay, right, they're all customized for, okay. Yeah, all customized for you. But then there are people who wanna do one-to-one, -one, but hey, I can't afford to do PT. Yeah. So we have this also one-to-one -one training, but we call it motivational coaching, where all the workouts are preset, so we have like, Kind of like a workout workout that oh no. that's already yeah that's already designed yeah so you have energy guide you through that workout but the thing is it's not customized so we have PT customized and right motivational training one to one tr training as well but it's preset we call right it preset. like a template that you will just use. Yeah, and then we change it. We change the program every three months. Okay, cool. And That's we also awesome. have group classes, like group mm -hmm. classes. Yeah, so we have PT, the customized one, and preset, and we have group classes. Yeah. yeah. And if you're new <laughs> to fitness, do you recommend um, that one on ones? It's better to start off with one on ones to kind of get like guidance and stuff for us before jumping straight into a group. I mean, personally, I, I always think that that's probably a, a good idea, but what's your, um, what, what are your thoughts? Again, if you're a beginner, it's always good to start from doing PT because yeah. to learn like proper form and techniques, proper way of breathing and stuff like that. Yeah, because the yeah. thing is like, if you're a beginner and you jump straight in group classes, you'll be like lost in terms of like, hey, I never done squat before. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My lighting. Oh, is oh no, we have like one minute forty six seconds left. So um, I can't believe how time flew. I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna have enough time to do an hour, but we managed to do a whole hour anyway. So I'm so so happy though that we managed to do this. I'm gonna be posting this up on my IG, and then hopefully I will try and upload it to YouTube as well. So I just want to say real quick, thank you so much, Drew. I have had such a great time. And uh, hi, Wani, <laughs> for spamming us hey, with your so banana good. stories. Don't worry, we will continue. <laughs> we'll continue those banana stories another time. Um, yeah. But for now, I um, just want to say thank you once again, Drew. And guys, if you want to, please, please go check out uh, Core Reactor PT Studio on Instagram. You can also follow Drew on her Instagram, too. If you guys have questions, just drop her a DM. And yeah, that's it from um for tonight's grow with nadia i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed yourself drew yeah i i did and thanks so much <laughs> to you nadia for organizing this you are the best thank, thank you. you i'll see you soon yeah. and we'll catch up on whatsapp yeah all right take care <laughs> have a good night's sleep bye everyone happy weekend